Thanks, Grish, and uh, really happy to invite the entire team from Coventry. So I have to say this, uh, Lydia, uh, between Krish and I, we decided that we will call two universities at any one time. But Krish, uh, Coventry is really close to Krish's heart and he decided that when Coventry comes, no other university comes. So this is uh, a full Coventry day and it's, it's a probably, uh, this day is historical in many ways and I'll tell you why I say that. Uh, I think after the COVID vaccine, if there was any other big news in India, it's probably today because uh, two of the most important boards, which is CBSE and ISC, Krish, am I right when I say that they've probably decided not to have board examinations this year? Correct, absolutely right. Yes, right. So this is a day of absolute respite for everyone who's in, who's in grade 12 and has been waiting in anticipation of some kind of an... What she's saying is that uh, in the 12th grade, okay, every school student and every college student must go through a board or like a final examination. And uh, the government government has decided to cancel that for this year and push it to uh, you know another another year. So this year it's completely cancelled. So it kind of actually makes me um, you know speak to my parents and show how upset I am for being born this early. Because had I been born a little earlier or a little later, I would be one of those students who wouldn't have to study and you know, go through the stress of their 12 standard final exams. Um, but yeah, that's that's precisely what Professor Chaudhary was trying to say. And um, a lot of students, a lot of freshmen as well, in order to get into a university of their choice, whichever school or university, they had to go through um, uh, this board examination and the result of that examination would determine where they would get admission in. Um, so that's why it's very, very essential and very important to people in India uh, for that matter. But until Professor Chaudhary joins, we're gonna, uh, you know, quickly, if we can do a small round of introductions uh, of, you know, so that the audience knows exactly where we are coming from, what we're doing and what we're aiming at. And then we can start a small moderated session where I think Lydia, then you can also take over and we'll be asking a couple of questions to you guys and, you know, we can get answers and speak accordingly. So uh, Lydia, would you like to say anything more or like to add anything to that? Um, well, I think thank you, Chris, for the introduction. That was really good. I think you should consider a career on TV. I'm just gonna leave it there, you know. Um, well, I I would like to say, well, I think um, we are very excited. We have colleagues from uh, the School of Art and Design, so Phil and Anne, our academic experts, that will be able to tell you a bit more about the courses and show you. We wanted to show you some student work as well because I think that's what actually reflects. What is it that the students are going to be doing in the course, the final outcome, let's say. Uh, then Mark uh, is from our academic partnership unit who will be, his team will be uh, dealing with the individual applications from students that decide to come and study with us in Coventry mm -hmm. from partners like ISD. So uh, they will be uh, supporting them throughout the way and, you know, they have a very, um, you know, efficient and, and approachable one-to-one -one, uh, relationship with the students throughout the whole thing and obviously we have a, a student with us today as well which is really exciting because you know there is no one better to tell about the experience uh, than the students but we also brought some uh, we have a couple of quizzes there ready we will see how we do with time uh, we have the first one saying um, where is Coventry so instead of us telling you where it is I have five questions for uh, the audience so we could start with that and then we've also selected a couple of videos very short videos um, to show to just give you a flavor of what is it um, you know the university some of the facilities etc so you know we have a very we also want you guys to tell us for example what courses you would like to hear about you know we we can show you uh, work from different courses so we don't really have a, a powerpoint presentation you know we don't want to bore anyone to tears so we want it to be very interactive and yeah and we will see how um how it goes you know what kind of things you want to know about so so yeah no absolutely so you know coming to uh, uh like i mentioned the first question also is about the university and you know because we've heard so much about coventry um, not only as a university, but also about the city and uh, how we're preparing for city of culture as well. And, you know, there's so much happening in Coventry. But, you know, why don't you take us through what 
what it is like what's the university like what's the city like because with these students are not only if they choose to study at coventry then they're, they're not just studying at coventry university they're studying in the city in the culture of the uk and all sorts so uh, please why don't you tell us something more about that um yes we can do that uh, i'm thinking shall we shall we start with the little quiz or do you want us to yeah, yeah? Yes. So, you know, instead of telling you guys where uh, Coventry is located in the UK, etc., and um, we've just got some questions for you. And I don't know if um, you've ever used uh, Kahoot for, uh, for the, the quiz, um, but I will, I'm going to share my screen and I will, uh, if you can, with your phones, if possible, go to that website because you will have to answer the questions on your phone. You will see them on the screen and answer on your phone, if that's okay. It's five questions only. Mm -hmm. So we will see uh, how much uh, you guys know of where Coventry is. Yeah, give me one second. Okay. Okay, let me see how, can you see my screen at the moment? Yes, we can. Yeah. Uh... So we can see your browser right now. Um, yeah, but yeah. I, you see, the problem is I can't see my browser. <laughs> I can't see the, the, the ones that I have. Uh, Phil, do, would you know how I can get rid of the bar on top? I love these technical things. It doesn't matter how many zooms we do, you know. <laughs> I don't. I'm not sure what's um, what's not working. What's not working? But you know, the mute, stop video, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, all of that for me is uh, at the top, so I can actually see the tabs that I have on the browser. Uh -huh. All the tabs are there. You can try moving it. Hmm. Yeah. Can you? Can you press okay. Yeah. Can you move them to the side? And I'll take you off full screen. Wow. Well, this is what we need a student here, you see. <laughs> hey. Brilliant. Okay, so um, I would need everyone to go to www.kahoot.it and put this game pin on it and we will start shortly. Okay, so I'm just going to put the link on the chat uh, right now. It's kahoot.it, correct? Yes. Okay. Kahoot with a K, yeah. Yes. So we've got kahoot.it and we put this 8028916 code on the screen. All right, perfect. I'm putting that as well in the chat box. So Mark is from Coventry, so he's not allowed to answer any of the questions. <laughs> well, I think the Coventry colleagues would just be not answering very quickly. So in this, I don't know, I'm sure you guys have used this before, um, mm -hmm. but you will get points for, um, you know, how fast you answer the question as well as if it's correct or not. So it's not only in, if you got the right one, yeah? There's only five of them. We have another one later, um, but yeah. Well, many people here, awesome, 34. Okay, shall we make a start? Oh, more people, more people. <laughs> What pin name? Somebody being very mysterious there. Sorry, say that again, Phil? I'm intrigued by the person who's called what's his name? <laughs> There's an enigma in the group.
41, 42. Okay, shall we make a start, Chris? What do you think? Absolutely. I think we can wait for maybe 30 seconds and start off. Okay, perfect. So then for those who haven't used Kahoot before, um, now when I click start, um, you will see the question and there is usually either four options or it's a multiple choice uh, question, four options as an answer um, or true or false. Um, so once the question appears on the screen, you will have to answer via your mobile phone, yeah? So if you uh, put the pin in, then you will see the four squares, the four color squares where you do, where you click the answer. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we can uh, start now. And yeah. for the next okay. ones who could not join this uh, specific question, we're gonna have it again. So you'll be able to join at that point. Okay, perfect. All right then, so if we are ready, I don't want to move this anymore. Okay, I'm just, can you see yourselves there? I'm not sure what you can yes, see. Okay. We can see you. All right then, let's make a start. Let's see if this works or I have to put you somewhere else. <laughs> let's see what happens with the first question. So first question, where is Coventry? You will see the options now. Uh -huh. Where is Coventry located? So we have four options, Wales, England, Scotland, or Northern Ireland. Five seconds to go. Okay, England, the majority, okay, okay few answers on the other ones. Okay, let's try question number two. Oh, now we have the ranking, of course. <laughs> Arpita, number one, perfect. Okay, let's move on to the next question. How far is Coventry from London by train? Three hours, two hours, one hour, four hours. This is the kind of thing that we always tell you. How far is it from <laughs> London by train? Okay, okay, so we are between one hour or two hours, perfect. Yes, one hour by train, two hours and a bit by car, but yeah, we all go by train. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Okay, well, different ranking. Mark, we said you were not answering what's happening here. Okay, next question. Which major city is only 20 minutes away from Coventry? So. Manchester, Liverpool, Bristol, or Birmingham? Okay, Birmingham, very good, very good. So we're almost there, locating it on the map, yeah? Okay, and Shafer, okay, Anne is there. Anne, you should not be allowed either. Okay. Fourth question, apart from Coventry University, which other university is also located in Coventry? University of Warwick, London School of Economics, Aston University or Swansea University? We are very lucky we have two of them. So let's see, three seconds. University of Warwick, also majority. Very good, very good. Let's see how we're doing with the rankings. Oh, REM is the highest answer strike of four. Perfect. Sha on first place. And let's see the last question. True or false? So do you think the red pin indicates where Coventry is?
Lydia, this is making me super competitive. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have let you play either. Okay, no problem. <laughs> True. Yes, perfect. Okay, so this is where we are. And let's see who is in the podium. Gerlin on the first, the third place. Rohit on the second place. And Shah on the first place. Brilliant. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, this is where we are. Um, I think maybe that we are here already. I can show you um, just the two minute video about. Yeah. Where are we? Okay, I might have to. Can you hear that or not? No, we, we can't hear that. I think you'll have to share your audio as well. Lydia, you've got us all on such a high after that Kahoot round. <laughs> okay, I'm going to um, share again and then I do this well. I clearly need a Zoom training, as you can see. So, okay, so I'm just going to show you under two minute video of what the university is like. Mm -hmm. Can you hear this now? Yep, yes. Yeah, okay, perfect. So here we go. Lydia for that video and Krish, uh, the electricity, the power is playing up at my place today. So stand by me. <laughs> all right. Okay. That's a song actually. So, all right. So uh, Lydia, thank you for that presentation, but really keen to know about the, uh, the programs at Coventry. So I know we've got a fashion program. I know we've got the product design program. I'm aware of the uh, the brilliant transportation design program. Um, these are the ones that I'm really familiar and of course the graphic program, uh, but I know it's a very large university, 40,000 students. So there is not just design, there's much else. Would you like to take us and give us a helicopter view of uh, what are the various programs and particularly in design because the students attending the session today are all design aspirants. Yes. Um, so, well, um, as you say, Google, we have uh, more programs than you've probably mentioned the main ones. Uh, so, as uh, we say today, we have uh, colleagues specialized in graphic design and fashion. 
uh, but obviously uh, Phil and Anne are working in the School of Art and Design. So um, we have courses uh, like, for example, illustration, animation, games, art. Um, the ones probably the flagship, one of the flagships in the faculty is automotive and transport design. Um, that's one of the schools uh, that we have in the faculty. Um, we have uh, the Media and Performing Arts School as well, and the School of Humanities. And um, in the whole university, we so we have uh, we are formed by another three faculties. So we are four all in all in the Coventry campus. Um, I'm going to ask Phil and Anne uh, if they would like to tell us a little bit more about generally the courses in the school. Um, the approach to teaching, etc., and then if um, we thought to highlight a few of them, if that's okay. Um, so, Phil and Anne, I'm not sure how you guys want to um, to do this. Yeah, I can. I can. Um, I'll get started, and um, this might also be an opportunity, maybe, um, to bring in some views from from Greta as well. So, I'll just talk very broadly um, about how things work at Coventry. Um, so your, your education will be framed very much around you and your aspirations. So as you progress through any of our undergraduate courses, you develop more autonomy in your own practice, in your own interests. So you become a specialist um, in um, an aspect or in aspects of your discipline as you progress through the course. Um, I've put a list of um, everything that we offer in the chat from the art and design school now so i think we're going to ask in a moment what courses particularly people are interested in um, but on any of those courses you will receive a mixture of lectures um, which are um, sessions where your tutor will present to the entire group and you'll be given some history or theory or some ideas around uh, your um, projects around your discipline um, as a way of supporting your education and next to that, you will also receive tutorials, which is when you will have a face to face or a small group discussion with a lecturer to look at your work in progress. Or you will receive seminars, which is where we'll discuss. So they're a bit like they're a bit more like interactive lectures, I suppose. So we will discuss ideas together, um, which are related to uh, the project that you're doing. Or you might have workshops and in those workshops, you'll be working with our technical teams. So you might be in printmaking, you might be in computer rooms, you might be, um, I'm just trying to think what people do in fashion now, which isn't my discipline, but workshops related to fashion, laser cutting, for instance, and maybe yeah. cutting Making, clay, clay modeling. Yeah. Modeling, yeah. So there's, a, and those aren't specific either to a course. So if you have an interest, so for instance, um, I'm the course leader for graphic design, and my students might want to do something in clay so they can go and book themselves into a clay workshop or into a glass workshop. I had a really lovely piece of glass typography produced by a student a couple of years ago, um, which was the first time we'd ever done that, but we got some really interesting results from it. So actually in all of these disciplines, you'll find there's lots of crossover and opportunities for you to work with students in other courses and to get involved in workshops, um, which are sort of in a sense kind of held, held by other courses. Um, and it allows you to really test and explore uh, the things that that interest you um, as a way of you starting to sculpt your your own your own pathway and then you you graduate with a portfolio which is quite specifically yours and it has your personal signature written through it in the sense that you've begun to tailor that work um, certainly on my course and I think on a lot of other courses in your third year you will do self-directed projects or you'll choose competition briefs so you really are allowed to take command of, of what you want to do and what you want to learn. Um, is there anything else that I should say Anne which I haven't said there? Oh, I think that's, uh, that's uh, most things we also within our courses we have a, a placement year which you can do a, a placement um, in addition to the three years of study um, that's very popular, especially fashion and graphics. A lot of students take up their placements and they do placements in the UK, but also internationally. So we have students, you know, right around the globe doing placements at all sorts of um, design houses, um, all sorts of places. So really interesting part of what we do. And we have huge amount of connections with industry, um, which makes us very relevant because we're working with industry partners as well. So I think that's a key thing. 
Lydia, I'm just going to jump in for the students because uh, sometimes the nomenclature of the programs are different in Coventry from the nomenclature that is used in ISD. So uh, for all the aspirants, uh, the communication design program offered at ISD is the one that maps into Phil's program, which is the graphic design program. Uh, and last time, Krish, when I was attending the session, I had a lot of students ask questions about uh, what is the arrangement between the two universities. I'm not sure if that was spoken while I was away, uh, but just so that everyone knows uh, that students who are studying at ISD uh, on completion of two years of study uh, can take a transfer to Coventry into Phil's program, which is communi communication design as we call it here in India at ISD and graphic design as, as Phil mentioned, the program that he leads. Uh, likewise, for the fashion design students uh, at SD, there are three fashion design programs, which is the fashion design program itself. There is a luxury and lifestyle uh, program. And there is the third one, which is the uh, fashion uh, communication and styling program, all of which lead into Anne's program. And you could do two years here at SD and then take a transfer into Anne's program. Uh, uh, Phil, uh, Anne, Lydia, Lydia is aware that majority of the students attending today's sessions are the ones who are likely to finish the two years at SD and then consider a, a, a mobility or a transfer to Coventry for the, for the programs that you represent. Uh, but, but I'm going to come straight on uh, Anne and I'm going to ask you this question is, uh, while we look at students who are looking at mobility, we've got uh, various partnerships across the globe. And, and what would it be about the fashion program at Coventry that in your opinion is strategic and for students to consider while taking a transfer possibly for a fashion design program? And I'm going to ask the same question to Phil possibly and, and Mark and Lydia, if you want to jump in after they've finished. So why fashion at Coventry is my, is my straight question to you. Okay, well, we actually have two programs at Coventry. We have uh, fashion, and international fashion business. So they're very different types of courses. So the fashion is fashion design and marketing. It's within, it's much more from a practice base. Whereas the international fashion business is a fashion business course, but within a school of art and design. So it's linked and connects with fashion design students. So I think that it's quite an unusual uh, international fashion business course. So uh, two very different programs. Um, so the fashion course, it is fashion design, but it also includes all aspects because the designer can't work in a vacuum. So they have to understand about all the marketing sides. So we do, we do all the digital aspects as well as the, the traditional manufacturing, but we also have a lot of technology as well. And that's one of the reasons why you would call Coventry. So we have um, laser cutting, digital embroidery, we have sonic welding, and all the students can actually do this. We also do print, so we have digital printing as well. So the students, a lot of what we do is the fashion design, but also we do a lot of textiles, which I think are really give the students something unique that they can create because they have that, we have that as well. So well, that's useful. So it's not fashion alone, it's fashion as well as textiles. And you also talked about digital printing and you also spoke about digital media. So you're not getting into pathways, you get it all. Yeah, in, in years one and two, we do all of those things. And in year three, you can specialize in what you want to do. But it's quite normal for our students to do, um, to make a collection, but also do the jewelry that goes with it. So we have the jewelry workshop. So they might go downstairs and make the jewelry. They might do the footwear um, they might make video. Um, they might do the photography. So they do all sorts of aspects as well. So a student <laughs> does uh, possibly two years at ISD, gets into the third year at Coventry, goes through the entire array and then possibly specializes inside a fashion into either textiles or photography or accessories um, or any of the pathways that you talked about or digital printing or any of those. Yeah. So yeah. that could be a journey. I, I get that. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Anne. Uh, yes, Bill. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I would I would say that we have a very contemporary graphic design course in the way that it looks at the discipline. So we're very keen that students don't um, 
don't assume that our course is purely about, for instance, Photoshop. So we're not a skills based course, we will teach you the skills that you, you need to be a graphic designer, so you will get plenty of software classes and software support and plenty of opportunities to go into workshops and so on, but we recognize that graphic design is actually bigger than the laptop. And there are many more things that we need to think about in order to be a successful graphic designer, so our course is actually built on five pillars, um, as we call them. And those pillars are technical, so that's all the computery stuff, so that's software and, and making, but also theoretical, so we'll give you lots of teaching and, and lots of uh, sessions which are about understanding the history of graphic design, understanding why things are the way that they are and why they work in the way that they do. Um, and that allows us to really untangle uh, the work that we're producing and understand how to make successful graphic design as opposed to simply things that look pretty. So we really understand what makes them work. Um, third of our pillars is about experimentation and innovation. So um, we recognize how graphic design works, but also how can we push the boundaries and how can we explore new ways of doing things so that when you graduate and go into industry, you've got new ideas and interesting ideas that perhaps people haven't really been exploring before. Um, and that means that you're pioneering in, um, in um, aspects of graphic design and bringing fresh ideas to the industry. And connected to, to, to that, we've got um, our fourth pillar, which is um, professional. So that is about helping you to become vocational. We want you to be employable by the time you graduate. So we will teach you um, um, in our course um, some very basic things like just how to project manage, for instance how to work with clients. You will have live projects where you are working with clients and producing work, which will be published. So you will be, I always say to my third year students on their very first day, you are now a professional graphic designer because every single one of them will have been published in their second year. They will have done something real and it will be out in the world. So we will teach you to become professional and to exist in the, in the professional sphere. Um, and we also, um, alongside that, um, our, our fifth pillar is about um, community. So it's about recognizing your place in the community of graphic designers, but also recognizing that community around you and recognizing the community in which your work is going to operate. So there are lots of kind of aspects and factors around producing things that look beautiful. So you will do that, but you will, you will factor in all of these different ideas as well, so that you know that you have a good, rounded, thorough um, and disciplined piece of work. Thank you for that, Phil. Um, uh, that is quite comprehensive. Uh, and the next question that therefore comes to my mind, and I, Anne, I picked up a word that you used, and I find that uh, universities in US of, use it fairly often. Uh, when you said practice based, right? Now, does it mean, I mean, because for us in India, designs has to be practice based because we are preparing or readying industry ready students. Now, when you say some programs are in uh, practice based while uh, some possibly aren't, does it mean that there are, there's a distinction between programs that are practice based and those that aren't? Um, for us, the fashion, two fashion courses are very different because the uh, fashion the BA fashion is practice based and it is a making designing course, but the international fashion business isn't. It's, it's very much more um, academic um, and comes more from a business side. Although the students do get um, lots about aesthetics, they understand about um, fashion by being working next alongside fashion students. So they get to understand the terminology, the practice and understand more about that rather than being in a business school. Okay, and Greta, are you doing a program that's practice based or otherwise? And, and really keen to know what program are you studying and while you're in the third year? That program. Uh, I'm doing graphic design and just as Phil was saying it's it has both theory practice there is community feeling all the time there is the professionalism uh, because we're being prepared to go to the industry and I think it starts from the very very beginning from the first day I think because uh, every tutor keeps saying that it's not just 
uh, a time period that you're a student, you are being pro professional already. So start thinking professionally that your work might be uh, a piece of work that you will put in your portfolio. Uh, so you keep always uh, have this idea in mind that your all work needs to be perfect, but you have all the guidances, all the support. And yeah, it's definitely practice based. We've been doing loads of tutorials, workshops, even during the lockdown, there was lots of activities that involved something that we had to do something to like experiment, create. So it's always, yeah, uh, exciting to do new things. <laughs> And Greta, I'm inclined to ask because uh, our students will make the journey to UK at some point, or some of them will. Are you originally from UK? And if you aren't, then what about living in a city like Coventry? Where do you stay? What's accommodation like? What's student life like at Coventry? So and I am. Yeah, and Mark, you may just add. I, I'm, I'm directing the question to Greta because she's the one who's going through that experience. But uh, I'm sure you also speak with a lot of other students. So, Greta, you could, and then did. Uh, Mark and Lydia, you might want to add about student life at uh, Coventry. So I'm originally from Lithuania, so I just moved to study to UK, Coventry. And it was actually a challenge in a way because there's a lot of new people, new new things to learn, new streets to uh, learn where to go, where to what to see. So, But it was really exciting and I think it's perfect city for students. There's always something to do. There's a, an event happening, uh, for example, like now, uh, because this uh, Coventry is city of culture, there are um, food trucks coming every weekend, so you can try new food every weekend. There's uh, dance competitions happening in the city of center, so there's always something to see or to do, so you never get bored. And right now, the city is also uh changing so there's it's more colorful now more vibrant there's loads of plants so it's beautiful as well and uh, but yeah you can go to town alone and you will meet new friends on the way uh, but i think yeah it's perfect city for students especially no regrets for coming uh, so yeah if i could i would stay here for longer but i think yeah it's time to explore different cities too <laughs> Thank you. Mark, do you want to add to that? Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I can add to it. Um, like, like Lydia touched on the start, I'm from Coventry, so I've kind of seen the, the development that's happened um, in the city over the last kind of five or six years. Um, and, and it's it, it's been massive and it's, it is down to the kind of uh, the students that have come to the, to, the, uh, to the city, the vibrancy, the different cultures that we're getting um, from the diverse student. Uh, body that we have um so yeah the, you know the city's developing it's you know it's um 10 times better than what it was when i was growing up in terms of uh the food the restaurants the, the you know the nightlife um and especially now with the art art and culture you know we're with the city of culture there's lots of things happening over the next 12 months if you want to get online i think there's a the big event is um, fully online uh on saturday so if you want to see what the city of culture is doing and there's an event that's going to be available online um, for our Saturday. So there's lots of activity. And obviously from having such a, a huge um, event like this, you know, we're hoping there is going to be a legacy for the, for the city and that, you know, we are going to be kind of coming um, an attractive spot for, for the art and culture um, industry. And, and, you know, we're hoping that there'll be a legacy for, for future students to kind of um, have access to, to things that probably we I, I haven't had had access to before. So, you know, the Turner Art Prize is, is happening in the city. There's um, poetry competitions, there's book and the Booker Prize is here as well. Um, and, you know, the, the, the city's thriving at the moment. So it's definitely an exciting time to be involved with, with Coventry. And those of you who may, might recognize the name, perhaps there's a very famous designer called Morag Myaskov, who's just produced a really beautiful uh, mural in the city, really, really bright, colourful um, kind of um, visual event, I suppose. But the City of Culture, as Mark says, there will be a legacy, so that will, the, the City of Culture year has just begun and will run for 12 months, but there'll be plenty of follow-up after that. So um, there's, there's going to be loads of creative, interesting things happening in the city. And we, 
will be part of that and we have been a part of that already it's one of our second year fashion students and two of our second year graphic design students volunteer uniform um, for the city of culture volunteers who will be wandering the city and helping people to find where they need to go um, to visit events i'm going to just put uh, oh, the chat's just been disabled actually but if the chat comes back online i'll give you a link to um, a newspaper article that showcases that design work and um, shows our students wearing their designs so we're really excited about that and um, and we will have plenty of um, involvement in, in forthcoming city of culture events and city of oh. culture is a really big thing for the uk so I, I, is it every four years Anne? i've forgotten Welcome. Yeah, every four years. Yeah. Four years. Yeah, I remember Barbara visited us, and that's the year that Coventry was announced as the year of uh, culture. Right. So we are it. We are it now. Very interesting idea. Maybe even in India, we should have a city of culture for four years. And uh, I'm just wondering which one would it be? Possibly, uh, be Jaipur to start with as a city. Akrish, Mumbai, Mumbai possibly a, a close second. Is it? Oh. Or Delhi, uh, Mumbai, all of the city Mumbai, of culture. Mumbai. Yeah. Okay, uh, Krish, um, I'm going to ask one or two questions and then we can take questions from the audience. So you can probably post about wherever you'd like for them to ask you the questions. Lydia, um, when I went to look at the list of programs, uh, you know, I, I get zoomed out of Zoom, so I can't look at the programs as I speak to you. But of course, you have a brilliant product design program as well. Uh, and I think you've got a remarkable transportation design program. So students who are studying the product design program at uh, ISD can take a, a, a transfer into the transportation design program at Coventry because our agreement says so. Um, would you like to speak about uh, what makes Coventry so special for transportation design? I understand that you've got a few major automobile uh, companies that has started out of Coventry. Uh, would you like to talk a little bit about the transportation design program? Um, yes, well, Coventry has, um, I think also this is um, due to the city and the tradition in the city. So it's um, is one of the, as they call it, motor cities in the UK. So there has a, a long engineering tradition, a long design tradition, in fact, Coventry University started as the School of Art and Design in 1843. So um, just as far as that, um, this tradition was already around the city. So we have Jaguar Land Rover that is the headquarters are just in the city as well, 15 minutes away, um, Rolls Royce, Morgan Car. So there is a, a big tradition in engineering as well as in design. And I think, um, we um, one of the things that makes the course so special is the clay modeling facilities that we have in Coventry, which is not very usual. And um, you know, the, they will mix the actually practice based um, skills, and they will teach students how to do that part as well as the digital side of things. So students will be working in their models um, to then well is obviously a different kind of um, model or concept depending on the year they are in but when for example they reach third year they will be working on the the final model that would be let's say the flagship portfolio piece for the the degree show that we host at the end of every year so i think they um they will have that experience from both sides and the fact that they have access to those facilities. And one of the things that I wanted also to, to mention before about this course, but also about Anne's course of fields, any of the, the um, art and design, as well as media. Um, we have also specialized technicians that um, are leave, let's say they leave in the workshops that the students can use. So you, the students will go and book some time or they would just go, for example, automotive and transport design, they will have to, they will have their models there. So they will go and they are open long hours and the technicians that are absolute experts in that area and how to use the software, how to use the machines, how to use it properly and in a safe way, because obviously we have very big machines in a, you know, um, then they will be there and they will support the students throughout uh, the, so, is not only the academic expertise that the students will be gaining, but there is also how to how to do this, 
and I'm sure probably Greta has been using some of the um, graphic design workshops that we have as well. So the printing, so is far from only being the digital side of things, which for me is something I, I came from the engineering faculty, which everything was workshops and, and big machines to do different tests and things. And here you could see how, you know, all that tradition is still there. You know, you will learn, you, you will have that possibility of learning and then just mixing and picking whatever style is it that you want to go through. Um, so for me, um, I think this is one of the things that most attract uh, the students. And um, in terms of the automotive and, and transport design course, the, the work that they also do with the research centers in the university that are actually dealing with current actual issues in the different areas is also very enriching for them because they will have the opportunity also to get involved to and at the maybe a lower level than the researchers, but they will also be looking at those issues and seeing how to solve them. So that's that's the kind of thing that I think it brings, but I don't know if Phil and Anne will have anything else to add or mark to, uh, to the auto and transport design specifically. No, anything? probably much more to add to that. No, I, will, I will jump in. Um, it, it's, it is absolutely a practice-based course. Um, some of that will be physical, so you'll actually be working in clay and, and manufacturing models and dressing them, so you'll really think about, you know, what, not just what do they look like, what materials might they be constructed from, what colours might they um, might they use, and, and so on. Um, but also you will work with using 3D software, so you can produce renders as well. And that's a really good way of just testing out ideas before you get to actually making something physically. And I think it's very similar in the world of graphic design that, and um, I'm sure as Greta has discovered, your designs can look very different in real life. Once you take them off the computer screen and put them on paper, you look at them and you think, no, this isn't right anymore. You need to go back and you need to work out what the problem is and, and work out how to fix it. Um, and we have this problem with book covers, for instance, all the time. It's great on screen, print it out. No, that's, that's, that's not a book cover, it's not working at all. So on the automotive course, you will test things on screen, you'll make models, you'll make prototypes, you've got 3D printers as well, so you can get kind of rough drafts of your work and, and see how they're going to look. Um, but you will, you will then make your very beautiful, very careful um, models. And I often walk past the um, automotive studios, and I can see the students in there with their clay tools, very, very carefully sculpting um, these very beautiful, elegant shapes into their models. And as well, we've had the fashion students work with uh, uh, automotive students to do uh, car interiors. So they've worked together on live projects, which is really good. Um, and also we have access to WGSN, so Worth Global Style Network. So the students would work on, look at trends for um, what's coming up and they'd work together to you know, design for a company looking ahead. So um, we do quite a lot of collaborative projects across the school, but also the international collaborative projects as well for, from all the programs. Uh, Lydia, that helps. So you've got uh, Jaguar and you've got uh, Rolls Royce, all of them housed in Coventry. So that explains, by the way, I, I'm not sure if everyone here knows, but Jaguar is, is an Indian acquisition now, isn't it? Isn't it a Tata Motors acquisition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, my last bundled question actually to you, Lydia, and, uh, and then we'll take the questions from the audience. And I see some of them have already asked the question is um, the tuition fee uh, for uh, international students. So what is it likely to cost us for the students who are coming to UK to study uh, in Coventry? Uh, how is the post-study work visa looking like now that post-Brexit UK universe, UK permits Indian students uh, if they've spent at least one year in the UK apparently to be able to stay back on a post-study work visa and what kind of scholarships can students from ISD expect while they come to Coventry? So three questions quickly, uh, the tuition fee, uh, the scholarships uh, and really what is the possibility for them to stay back on completion of the program to work in UK. Okay, so I think I'm going to answer this uh, in conjunction with Mark. He'll give me a hand with the uh, post uh, work study visa. I think, well, the tuition fees at the moment for the art and design pro programs are around 
£16,000 for international students. We'll have to see exactly um, the, um, the, because depending on the course, it might be a price or another, but it would be around uh, the £16,000. Of course, um, when you start looking at your journey, uh, we will talk to you about the visas and all the requirements on that side as well. So I think, you know, uh, people will have a, a general look and have to uh, plan for, for that side as well, because the student visa will have um, some finances attached to it that, that you will have to, to have. I don't know if this is, uh, oh, these are all questions. Sorry, I've got the chat here and I thought, I don't know if it's <laughs> Mark saying something. Um, and then Mark, would you like to, um, to tell us a bit more about the post-work study visa? Yeah, so um, obviously the post-study post work visa is um, relatively new. I know it's been kind of announced <clears throat> probably two years ago, but it's probably starting to come into effect from now. Um, and it's, called, it's going to be called like a graduate route. Um, so it's a two-year non-sponsored visa. Uh, that allows students to stay and work in the UK. Um, there's no kind of sponsorship required from an employer. Um, it's purely based on uh, you having a, a degree um, or after you complete a degree in the UK. Um, there's no restrictions on the kind of work you do um, or that or kind of minimum salary. Um, you can use that two years to spend time looking for work and, and you're able to kind of switch jobs uh, without any impact on, on the visa. So it's quite a flexible visa that allows students to uh, um, you know, graduate and then want to spend uh, some extra time in the UK doing, you know, it could be kind of um, working at, you know, a kind of graduate level and working way up or just got kind of experiencing experiments with different roles. So it's quite flexible. Um, but it, it, you know, it only lasts for two years, you can't extend it um, after that point. Um, I believe if you want to extend a, you know, a visa, then you would need that employee sponsorship um, to be able to get a, a different type of visa to allow you to continue staying in the UK. Um, but it is uh, coming into in, you know, effect um, this year uh, from the information that, we'll, that I've had um, as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. So two things uh, I take from that. One is that uh, you don't need a sponsor if you get your degree from Coventry. So for students who take a transfer to Coventry uh, they, and finish the program from Coventry, uh, they obviously get their degrees from University of Coventry. So example, a student who's done product design at SDA and takes a transfer into the transportation design program at Coventry will graduate with a BA honors or BA transportation design major. And that allows them to work in the UK. Of course, portfolio is, is, is all that it takes finally to get yourself a great job and a great career, but the, uh, the visa is applicable for them to work. Krish, I'm actually going to hand over to you to ask any questions. I can see there's one and I'm going to direct it to Phil because it, it is meant for Phil is tell us a little bit about your illustration specialization. So Phil, I'm not sure if illustration is a pathway inside of graphic design or is it a separate school by itself? And if you can just tell all the young listeners uh, really what illustration is. Yeah, we have uh, we have an illustration course. Um, but it doesn't mean that you can't be an illustrator on the graphic design course as well. And actually, increasingly, I would say I'm getting students who are very accomplished illustrators on the graphic design course. And it's good to be able to do that because it gives you more control over your work. So um, Greta, for instance, did a really lovely uh, book cover uh, recently and you did those lovely um, inky illustrations for that which were really nice um, and so it's good to be able to be flexible and, and particularly in the world of graphic design it's important to be able to adapt and, and explore lots of different things however yes we do have um, a specifically illustration course as well so for those of you who are less interested perhaps in making the book cover, for instance, or making the poster, you might focus on producing the illustrations that might be included on book covers or in books or on posters. So it's, it has less of a focus on graphic design and much more on just image making and exploring ideas of image making. And you might also test some of those ideas in moving image, which again, you can do on the graphic design course and have students produce some basic animations for, for instance, website and app designs. Um, and we've also had students produce television graphics on our course as well. Um, but on the illustration course, you will focus purely on, on what is that image, how is it made and how does it work. 
Did I hear you say moving images as well? Yeah, so um, I mean, in a sense, this is this is when I said at the beginning, um, we've got these very specific courses, but there's lots of crossover between them. There's lots of opportunities to do things that might actually appear in other courses. So on both the graphics course and the illustration course, you will look at aspects of illustration, you will look at aspects of moving image. That's useful. So a little bit like, uh, you know, and the journey we talked about in fashion, which is fashion to textiles, could be communication design leading into illustration or moving images or animation or any of those pathways. Great, I think Krish has got three quick questions to ask you from the audience and, and then we'll close for the day. Over to you, Krish. Yeah, thank you so much, Bulbul ma'am. Uh, we have uh, reduced the questions to two because I think you asked the first one. And thank you so much for taking those questions and uh, to the team also for answering them so promptly. Uh, the first question that we have is, uh, what tips can you give to us as students for building an outstanding portfolio for the fashion and the graphics program? And of course, uh, Phil, Anne, and Greta also, if you could give us your two cents. Yes, um, I'm not sure if Anne might have frozen, actually, she might be on, on delay. So I'll, I'll pick this up and I'm sure Anne will, will join us uh, with her own advice when she, uh, when she can. Um, but my advice, and I think for any course actually, is to show versatility and flexibility. So just as I was, I was saying a, a few moments ago, to be a really accomplished creative person, and I'm thinking particularly as a graphic designer, you need to be experimental and exploratory. So although graphic design involves, for instance, website design, book design, magazine design, you know, all those kind of things that you expect from graphics, it's really nice as well when I look through students' portfolios to see they've tested ideas in textiles, or they've shown some really interesting drawing skills, because all of these things um, point towards somebody who is who is brave and is prepared to test and, and challenge themselves. Um, Greta, do you want to talk a little bit perhaps about your entry portfolio, but also your exit portfolio? How are those two things different and um, what would you yeah. include? Uh, so when I entered the university, I didn't have basically anything graphic design related because uh, uh, I haven't done anything graphic design before I entered the university but uh, yeah so I entered with just drawings paintings some sculptures so basically it was fine art uh, portfolio but uh, now I have loads of different artwork so uh, as Phil mentioned website design book cover design some posters for events uh, advertisement and um, yeah, there's a lot uh, of different things I could include, uh, but I'm mostly focusing on editorial design, on printmaking. So that's why my portfolio is more around these areas. So I, I'm including more, um, bo more book covers, more uh, magazine layouts and all that. So yeah, but it they definitely changed. But I think the key to successful portfolio is to have a piece of yourself in your work. So when you work honestly uh, with passion, if you do the things you actually enjoy and not follow some kind of trends, for example, then it's going to be definitely successful, I would say. <laughs> well, I'm speaking for fashion, shall I? So um, we would like to see um, lots of drawing, color, it's good to see digital skills, like to see making. So we'd like to see examples of your work in progress. I don't want to just see finished sheets. I think it's really good to see, as, as Phil says, you know, your workings out, your design development, the work in your sketchbook, the things that you've been experimenting with and playing. So not just finished polished sheets, I would say. Uh -huh. That's very true. And uh, thank you for putting it that way. That's a lot of... Um... Uh, you know, personalization that goes through in your portfolio, right? It's not about putting something out, but it's a part of you that's going out. Uh, do you agree with that, Lydia and Mark? Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we yeah. wouldn't be in touch with portfolios um, <clears throat> as close as Phil and Anne would or Greta, who actually had to make one. But this is every time, this is what we hear every time we talk about this. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a... Uh, uh, you know, from Phil when he was saying, experiment, be brave. Well, if you see the amount of different things that the graphic design students can do in the workshops, 
you will see what he's meaning with the experimenting, you know, the printing, the etching, the, all the different techniques that they can, they can learn, you know, so it's, it, well, it will be part of that. I think Anne has more requirements for fashion, you know, <laughs> from what he was saying, but, um, you know, this is something as well that um, uh, in time, if the students are interested to talk about further, um, you know, we we are also happy to do something specifically about that because I know this is usually a lot of the this is a very typical question that we get from our international partners. So, so you know, there is there is an opportunity to have a look at this just, just that in one session. Trish, I think Greta said something two very very exciting things. Uh, she said uh, put you, put a little bit of you in the portfolio, right? And at any stage there must be a little bit of you in the portfolio. And the other thing she said is when I went to Coventry, I had uh, paintings and drawings and sculptures uh, and my portfolio was, and Greta, that's really useful to know because I never looked at it like that, it was a little bit like a fine arts portfolio. And I understand that because majority of the students who apply to ISD would, would have a fine arts like portfolio like yours, because when you are in school, those are the things you're doing by the side. Uh, a process portfolio, obviously happens when you're part of the design school and you undergo the process and not just get fixated with the idea of the end product. So I think uh, I, I really like the way you, you give the nomenclature of a fine arts portfolio, which is perfectly fine at that stage of life. And of course, put a little bit of you in your work. So that was, that was very exciting and my learning for the day. <laughs> Over to you again, Trish. Yes, uh, Mark, would you like to add on to that? Um, yeah, you know, if students are interested, we, we, we have documents available that kind of outlines what, what portfolio requirements um, are needed and stuff, so we can share that with students, but yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not as knowledgeable as kind of Phil and Anne uh, or Greta, so um, I could give you a portfolio on an admissions process and that would probably be my extent of, of a portfolio, but um, yeah, the, yeah, we, we, we can support uh, your students, you know, if they've got any co kind of questions or concerns and they're a little bit worried about what they need to include, you know, Phil and Anna are always available. We can always kind of get an email comms um, or, or a quick call in place to, to support you um, and, and your students as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Very, very helpful. Just one last question, okay, and this is to each one on the panel. If you had to describe the university in one word or in one phrase, what would that be? Phil, we can go with you first since you see you're the most expressive on the call right now. You're putting me on the spot, eh? Um, I would say, as a university, I would say we're future thinking. Mm -hmm. So it's important to be aware of the past. It's important to be aware of, of where we are. But I think as a university, we're always looking to the future. We've got loads of really, I don't know whether we've got the time to, to show you, actually, we've got, Lydia has a really great video of our forthcoming building redevelopment, but we're looking at new ways of teaching, new ways of delivery. We're always looking at industry and what's happening in industry and how our courses need to respond and react so that we're absolutely contemporary and our students are ready to design for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What about you, Anne? What do you think? I'm going to say international mm -hmm. because we have a lot of international students. We're very multicultural, but also we're very open and looking out to international partners. And we work a lot with international um, institutions, but also industry and cultural you know, institutions as well. So I would say international. Lovely. Greta, what do you think? I'm choosing between two words. It's either challenging or inspiring, but challenging in the best possible way because there's someone that will challenge you to do your best, to create something new, to try something. So yeah, there's a new challenge every day, but it will lead to a new skill or a new amazing project. So that's one word or, as I said, inspiring because you're always surrounded by people that uh, already have some knowledge or they come from a different background. So it's always amazing to talk to people, see their work, see what they are inspired of. So that's, I think, yeah, those two words, I couldn't choose one, <laughs> but uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Lydia, what about you? 
I'm going to be greedy. I have three words. Sorry. <laughs> so I have the first word, obviously, with what I was saying international <laughs> or global. So, you know, um, with everything we do in this area, because I think that also makes uh, Coventry what, you know, the, the institution it is nowadays. Um, diversity as well, because um, also not just the amount of students that we have from all over the world, which I think we have now 120 countries on campus at the moment. So it's a real diversity. It's a, it's a really enriching experience for the students. And the last one would be collaboration. Collaboration with partners, collaboration between faculty, cross faculty. I think that's also the key um, for us. So I will I will stick to those three. <laughs> and Mark, what about you? Um, yeah, kind of everyone's kind of touched on um, kind of key points. You know, I think and when she said that international and then obviously Greta's kind of alluded to it as well. You know, you're going to be meeting and surrounding students from all over the world who are going to influence your work and influence your thinking. You know, you, some students may come with this idea of this is what fashion is like, this is what product design like, this is what transportation or you know design is, is like. But you'll you'll meet people from different kind of backgrounds and cultures where things look different and you know are done differently. And that's going to have a real kind of learning impact on, on you as students. Um, you know, Greta kind of alluded to it with her portfolio, how that progressed over time. And that kind of may have progressed not just from the teaching she had, but also from the interaction with students she had from all over the world. So definitely international, but in, innovation, progression, you know, progressive, you know, com, kind of, Touching on what Phil said, you know, Coventry University, we are a progressive university, we don't stand still. You know, the, the campus has changed every year. I think there's a, something something changing on the campus, something new in, in a faculty. So, you know, we're always looking to the future, always kind of trying to think ahead, get one step ahead, work closely with industry so we can kind of prepare our students for their future careers as well. Um, so definitely kind of progressive um, innovation from, from us as a university. <clears throat> Well, lovely, very, very well put. Very, very well put. Thank you so much, Mark. And in fact, thank you so much, everyone, because this brings us to the end of this call. I think, uh, Lydia, you're going to be bombarded with a lot of messages, a lot of emails, and a lot of, uh, you know, inquiries about how students can be a part of Coventry. So we will be uh, reaching out to you, if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, of course. Please do. Yeah. We will be waiting for them now. <laughs> Lovely, lovely. I love the enthusiasm. But thank you so much, everyone, for joining this call and joining uh, this session this evening. Uh, before we go, we have two very, very quick announcements for the freshmen on this call. There are two events that oh, we're planning to do, and uh, it's in the pipeline. The first event, of course, we'll be sharing it right now, and uh, you'll be seeing it on the screen. It is called, I think you can see it right now. If I'm not mistaken, I can't really see my screen. Sure, can, we can't see it yet. You cannot. Okay, all right. I'm going to reshare it very quickly. All right. We can see it. Is it visible now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the pre-semester bootcamp. We're having it on the 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th of this month. This is for all you freshman students who want to know the A to Z about design. We're going to have multiple workshops and we're going to have, uh, you know, some very, very intensive hands-on training sessions with each one of you. Uh, this is your gateway into design. So we're very, we're looking forward to having each one of you on this pre-SEM bootcamp. And I promise you, it's going to be a hell of a session. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And uh, this is an opportunity that you absolutely don't want to miss. So if you haven't registered, please do the link on the web, on the artwork right now. It's www.isd.in slash pre-SEM bootcamp. We'll be putting it in the chat box as well for everyone who uh, cannot uh, see it right now. So that is the first event. Bulbul, would you like to add anything about this event, or should no, I? No, I think uh, the students have received. There are. I, I see a lot of them have already registered. Up, uh, Krish, I mean, I'm assuming that everyone who's attending this is actually registered because I see the registrations over 300. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, all of you must register if you haven't already to be able to attend these uh, four days of a very intensive. Uh, 
boot camp and this will also prepare you for things that are about to start which is a new journey uh, which is your first year itself so that's it uh, krish let's let's keep the reserve the uh, the surprise for when seventh happens but yes go ahead your second presentation second announcement yes my second announcement uh, this is actually part 2 of what we did previously this is the is got talent session uh we had one uh, a few weeks back and that was such a success and we heard so many beautiful uh you know we were audience of such beautiful talent that we decided to do it one more time and the students have come in in numbers in herds that we were so surprised that we didn't know that they had such talent and now we're going to see each one of them perform uh for their batchmates so it's going to be an absolute uh, absolutely fun evening if i can call it and um uh, to all my friends from coventry we'd love to invite you as well for this because i'm telling you this is going to be amazing you'll you'll must take uh, you know some time off and see this but of course i will be sending each one of you all the invite as well and every freshman on this call if you haven't registered and if you don't if you haven't gotten a chance to tell us what you're so absolutely amazing at you still can because today is the last date for registration we'd be closing it this evening so please make sure you take the most of this opportunity well that being said this brings us again to the end of our session and i'd like to thank every one of you for being a part of this lovely lovely session of international tsd we will be coming back with another university in the next few weeks please uh, keep watching this space keep watching our instagram channels and uh, checking your mailboxes as well because we will be sending you communication on the next session in this series but given that please take care take your vaccines be safe stay indoors and enjoy the rest of the week thank you so much to everyone on this call and thank you so much to the team from coventry as well for entertaining us today thank you lydia thank you phil and mark and greta and and krish you started by saying uh, congratulating mark i thought the one word that mark wants to sum up this conversation is he needs more sleep a new dad definitely needs as much sleep isn't it <laughs> so paternity yeah. leave and and sleep to mark thank you everyone for joining and thank yes. you all the students thank you krish for organizing thank you of you there well, take care bye bye <clears throat>